fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark, they and every beast according to its kind, and all the cattle according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every bird of every sort. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And they that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily upon the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heavens were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, birds, cattle, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm upon the earth, and every man, everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life, died. He blotted out every living thing that was upon the face of the ground, man and animal and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left. And since those that were with him, okay. Only Noah was left, and those that were with him in the ark, and the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. Okay. Somebody else? But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals mm -hmm. and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. <clears throat> At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water had gone down, and on the seventeenth day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountain of Arak. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. After forty days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could not find no place to set its feet because there was water over it, all the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. At the sixth day of the month of Noah's six hundred and first year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the twenty-seventh day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, <clears throat> the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number upon it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his son's wife, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all of the birds, everything that moves on the earth came out of the ark, one kind after another. <clears throat> then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures, as I have done. As long as the earth endures seed time and harvest, 
cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Then God blessed Noah and his son, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and the dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves <clears throat> along the ground, and upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat the meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal. And from each man, too, I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow man. Whoever sheds the blood of man by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it. And God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is a sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all the living creatures of every kind of the earth. So God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all the life on the earth. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Somebody else want to read? Oh, this, the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Jesup. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the earth. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked in backwards and covered their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way, so they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah came, when Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed <coughs> be the Lord, the God of Sham, my Canaan be the slave of Sham, my God extend the territory of Jessup, May Jessup live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Altogether, Noah lived 950 years, and then he died. All right. Died kind of young, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's a spring chicken. He's a young spring chicken. <laughs> okay. So, first question. We kind of touched on this a little bit. Um... But it's it's one of the um, more controversial questions that, that's covered when we talk about the flood, and that is, was the flood local or global? I would think it's global. Okay. I think it was global, but I did wonder where the dove got the olive branch. Okay. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking it could possibly have sprouted in that time, but I. I guess I lean more heavily toward global. Okay. Anybody else? I as well, but I don't have anything to base it on. I can't. All right. Um, I thought when we talked about this before, we thought it was not global. He did. But, but, <laughs> but a couple of the things, when it's like the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. Okay. Okay, so... All right. Yeah, there was a lot of all flesh, all the earth, yeah, all, mm -hmm. all the birds, all. The okay, all right. Good. All right. All right. So first of all, we need to do a little bit of Hebrew. Okay. And I put it for your reference. It's all up on the board here. 
Okay, there's three different words that are important here. The first one is Eretz. And for your benefit, I didn't write it out in the actual Hebrew um, alphabet. Um, which can be translated as earth or land. Mm -hmm. all right? So that it can refer to the whole earth, the, the globe, all right? Or it can refer to um, a region, um, which could be like what we would call the Middle East. It could refer to um, it could refer to like a nation. Um, it could refer to a geographical region, right? Um, then the word har, which is usually translated mountain um, or hill. And, um, and, and they don't make a distinction in Hebrew. There's no like separate word that, that only means hill or only means mountain. They use this word har to mean whether you're talking about Mount Zion, which is just, it's, it's, which is just Jerusalem, all right, which isn't a mountain, it's just a hill. It's, it's a good size hill, but it's a hill. All right, um, there's plenty of much larger hills around it. Um, or it could be used to refer to, well, they wouldn't have known about Mount Everest, but, you know, um, it can refer to mountains, snow-capped mountains um, as well. All right. The other word is Adama, which means either earth or ground. You see the word Adam in there? Because Adam means came from the ground. All right. Um, and, uh, or, or literally the word Adam is the same word. Say Adama can mean earth also? Yeah, like it can mean like ground or dirt. Yes, yes. like I like understand. what we call like dry ground or, mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so it and it Adama is. All right, I haven't checked every use of it, but but generally it's translated ground because it's pretty good. Sometimes it's translated earth, but but usually it's translated ground because it gives the, it's this idea of of dirt. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, so as you read through this, most English translations trans in the in the Genesis, um, uh, in the Noah story, Eretz is always translated Earth. <clears throat> but seventy percent of the Bible, whenever the word well Old Testament because Hebrew, um, whenever the word Eretz appears, seventy percent of the time is translated land, not referring to the whole Earth. It's used more to refer to and that's even in like the King James it's not like it's some modern liberal translation or something like that um, it is actually used um, very often more often than not to refer to um, to a, a specific region um, now that doesn't mean that it's not used to, to refer to the whole earth because it is so it could mean either one all right. Same with the the word har. It could be sometimes it's translated hill, sometimes it's translated mountain. I mean, a lot of times um, in the Bible it's translated mountain um, or mount, even though it's actually a hill. Um, and and but it's just called that just because it's because we don't have in English we don't have like you know we can say mount something to refer to a hill, whereas you don't say like and he went to you know, Hill Calvary or something, mm -hmm. you know, you, you say mount, and um, even though it's not a mountain. And so it's that <coughs> same kind of thing. All right. So, but some good questions. All right. It says under the whole sky. All right. So then the, the next question is, when it says under the whole, does it really <coughs> mean the whole? I'm I know. just going to give you the earth and the land and the mountain and the ground thing, but I figured, nah, you can't argue the entire heavens were covered. <laughs> All right, but here's the thing. Um, when, when we get to Solomon, it says the whole earth came and traded with him. Does that mean the whole earth came and traded with him? Or is that an exaggeration? And how, how is that word? Is it? It's the whole, yeah. You know, and, and we get is, this. What word is? Is it? It's Eretz. The same? Well, no, because it's. Well, yeah, yeah. It's. It's. Now you can't mix apples and oranges. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're right. You're the, under the whole heavens, okay. So Versus, Eretz is used in Solomon for. No, it's. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, the whole Eretz. All right. Okay. 
And and you get I mean you get from that that there were people from all different places, different was, nations that were coming to trade with him. Probably all right. there were probably people from the entire world that came to trade. Or at least the entire known world. Not that now understand, not that God didn't know the whole world, all right? But as far as the the Hebrews were concerned, as far as who they actually cared, you know, and you know, were would actually do commerce with, you know, Israel was not doing commerce with China, um, even though there were people in China, um, and uh, so, so yeah, you you get this question of what exactly do you mean? by the whole earth under the are there other instances in the Bible where you have the same thing happening that is in 70% of the Bible a certain word is translated one way but we take it another way and another book I, I guess the first thing that pops into my mind is um, the virgin birth it can be translated as I recall young girl or virgin yes it can and so then how do you decide which it is okay well that's a good question all right i mean i know and why because the bible tells us that she knew no man yep. and god was the father yep okay all right and um and for but for that matter even with with isaiah with that prophecy um the prophecies most of the prophecies in the old testament had uh what we call an immediate fulfillment and a final fulfillment mm -hmm where there's this sort of a prophecy was made and very shortly afterward within a period of, of days, months, or, or a few years, say within a, a decade or, or three, um, that it would be fulfilled still sort of within the prophet's lifetime or, or shortly thereafter. Probably to prove whether he not right. he was, knew right, what he right. was talking about. Okay, so then, but then you also have this sort of um, what, and we uh, oftentimes what that is we call a type. It's a um, it's a foreshadowing mm -hmm. where Jesus is the greater fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in Isaiah's day, and it's interesting with the with that Isaiah seven fourteen is the the passage you're talking about, and um, where he he what he actually says is um, he doesn't say the virgin shall conceive and, and be with child. It says you virgin will conceive and be with child and so just the way that it's worded what he, it's like he was going you that that girl sitting right next to the king there you're gonna conceive and be with child all right which there when you're talking about giving the king a sign that would actually be a sign if he says this this girl right here who's a virgin she's gonna conceive and be with child now obviously she she, she wasn't that wasn't gonna be a virgin birth all right that would that would have been noteworthy and you know and and isaiah was in in her case was not talking about a virgin birth but where but we have the holy spirit interpreting it for us in um in luke where he, he actually um clarifies that yes we're talking about um the the final fulfillment is an actual virgin conceiving and, and being with child well, but if you're talking about verse 14, now that we're on the subject, mm -hmm. <laughs> it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman will conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So he wasn't telling the king that this girl's going to call this, her son the name Emmanuel, was he? The, the, the girl would call him that, yeah. And so his name probably was actually, literally, she named him Emmanuel. I've never heard that before. I'm totally flabbergasted. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise, the king saying, I'm not going to ask you a sign, and, and then if Isaiah says, fine, you know, God's going to give you a sign. Well, it wouldn't have been a sign for him. He'd have been long dead by the time Jesus came along. That's true. Hmm. So, um... So yeah, then it, it wouldn't have been a sign for him. So we always have this sort of immediate and um, and and final fulfillment. Well, okay, not always. I mean, sometimes it's you know when when he starts talking about on God's holy mountain and and um, he sort of gets into these descriptions about um, the lion will lay down with the 
or was it the wolf will lay down with the lamb and the lion with the ox and you know and, and stuff like that um you know then you get okay well that that's clearly that's talking about the the second coming and and you don't have any immediate fulfillment of that so um so yeah no the the word it's um the hebrew word alma um which is best translated virgin mm-hmm. all right um, but the, there is another word that was more often translated virgin. But the problem is that word, uh, and I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. Um, that word was also sometimes used to refer to a married woman. And well, so, I got us off whereas, the subject. Yeah, I'm Alma trying to always use refers a, to a virgin. Example. I guess I still think it's <laughs> the whole word. Okay. And, you know, and, and here's the thing. I'm not going to... Uh, there's a... All right, there's issues on both sides of the argument, okay? And so I'm not going to tell you which side you should take, all right, just to be ambiguous, all right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to present both sides and let you think for yourself. Thank you. Instead yes. of... I was going to mention that when you look back at 617 in the uh, Lutheran Study Bible, mm-hmm. it says that in uh, 2 Peter 3, 6, that he confirms that uh, it, that the flood and its devastation was universal and total, except for Noah and his family. All right. Yeah. And what does what does Peter say? Because that's important. Um, By these waters, also the world of that of the time was deluged and destroyed. All right. All right. And so the the word there for world, so this is Greek now, so we can't. It's not air. It's it's cosmos. All right, which where we get our word cosmopolitan, right? Which, and just to make it even more ambiguous, <laughs> the word cosmos can refer to either the whole Earth or a um um the a. It has a different. It has more of a, a sort of. It can refer to a population center. Six. Which is why we get the word cosmopolitan, referring to a population, a highly populated area. And um, and so there, what so what that word cosmos, it it again you can take it as the whole earth, or you can take it as all of mankind. All right. Now both sides of this issue, if you take the Bible as the word of God, all right, and we certainly should because it absolutely is, all right. Then we do have to either side, you have to say. Yes, God destroyed all mankind except for Noah. All right. Now, that has to be understood. There's no question about that. The Bible is is just absolutely explicit on that. You know, and we had even in... It was in this morning's reading. Um, they talked about... What was it? I'm trying to remember. Um, maybe it was in something we talked about in Bible class. But it was um, where it says that only eight survived, right? That all mankind was wiped out and only eight survived. I must have been sleeping during that part, so <laughs> I don't remember that. But it must have been during Bible class that we talked a lot of that. I'm trying to remember. But I remember looking at that passage and thinking about tonight as we looked at it. So I think it's in Hebrews. Um, so, yeah, because we were looking at Hebrews this morning during, during my Bible class, so. Um, so yeah, definitely this refers to all mankind. Okay, so then if you don't believe it was over the entire earth and only Noah and his family and daughters-in-law survived, what happened to the other people? Good question. If the flood didn't get them. All right, and the answer to that we can find a little while later. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> at the Tower of Babel. Alright? Now, God told them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. But did they? No, they stuck together. They all stayed in one region. Alright? They did not spread out until God forced them to. But that was later. Alright? So, by all indication, before the flood, People didn't weren't spread out all over the earth. They were just in this one area. Now, by an area, we're talking a pretty 
vast area, all right? Now, even if you take this as, as a, a regional thing, I mean, we're not talking about, like, you know, North Ridgeville, you know? I mean, we're talking about a, a huge, and in fact, in that sort of general area, um, there's, if you look at, at the geography of it, sort of from space and that, it's kind of bowl shaped so that if they had massive flooding and you know possible volcanic activity or something like that this area to the hot to the tops of their high hills would would flood i mean if with with enough and there's been all kinds of theories about how the flood was was caused um yeah, sort right. of what Right. Okay. And and it says the the fountains of the deep opened up too. Yeah. All right. Um, so it's it's but but what did God use? You know, like with the when he when he parted the Red Sea, he used a strong wind. It says that right in Exodus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so God often uses um, natural phenomena to produce <clears throat> supernatural results, or or you know, um, where he sort of times things just right. I mean, you know. Even it, it and, and I saw a special a while back where it, it talked about if a comet had hit in just the right spot in the Indian Ocean, you would have had this sort of massive, um, uh, it said like two thirds of the Earth would have been covered or something like that. It would have been huge. And in fact, there is a crater right about where they're talking about that looks like at some point there was a comet that hit. All right. Um, so it, that could have been it. And um, so if that's the case, then this would have caused massive, massive damage. And boy, what timing that Noah got on the boat just at the right time. All right. <laughs> so you need to be clear here. This is miraculous no matter how you slice it. OK. Mm. Um, and, and this is the floods and all floods. All right. When we get further on and we talk about the rainbow and stuff like that, this is there has been no flood like this since then all right well would it be safe then to say that the flood destroyed civilization as it was known at that time absolutely okay i'm good with that then. and in fact you could i would <laughs> i would take it so far as to say the flood destroyed the inhabited world right now, let me just throw a few things at you that sort of would have caused some problems. If, if it actually is a global flood, some of the things that are hard to account for. Um, and now understand, all these things you could explain with, well, it's God, so you can perform a miracle. Okay, fine. But usually when God performs a miracle, he lets somebody know about it. Okay? Um, especially in, in, uh, when you're talking about Bible stories. If, there's, if God's going to throw some extra miracles in there... Um, Generally, as, as far as we know, he has a point of saying, and, and it was a miracle, you know, of some kind. Um, now, just, okay, for instance, if the whole world is flooded, was the water fresh water or salt water? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Because. Does it matter? Yeah, it does, because half of the fish are going to die one way or the other. <laughs> Take your pick, and there's some, and there's some animals that live in tidal regions that half the time it's it's salt water and half the time it's fresh water, but they need that that difference too to, to regulate their salinity. It's but, and it's only temporary, though, you know. It was only a year. <laughs> right. So now, you know, but do, we're assuming that or something. we're assuming that there was a salt. I dropped my pen somewhere in my. <laughs> anyway, could you do that on purpose? No, leave it. I'm gonna. Uh, anyway, how, uh, do we know for sure that there was a difference? In other words, there was a salty sea and a fresh water because it hadn't rained before then. So I, I never thought of that, but maybe the water was just all the same. Okay. If, maybe they didn't converge. If. If. If there was a difference, or, or I mean, if, if you know, if, if there wasn't that distinction, then you've got massive evolution happening happening at an extremely fast rate afterward. All right, and that's that's one of the, the, the 
that's one of the things that you run into with this is is that now according to young earth creation scientists um they say okay well so noah had um okay well what kind of what kind of uh you know lions and tigers and um and cheetahs and and leopards and they said, no, no, no. there was a cat a kind of cat and since then through isolation the same way that you have um different people by being isolated in different places you have certain characteristics that come out they contend that um that you have a cat okay of some kind that by um its offspring being isolated in different areas and, and that that you have all these different lions and tigers and, and house cats and, and and everything else that all come from this one cat well <laughs> the problem is is that if you sort of look at at the, the the genetic spread of all these different cats and the time period that they're talking about because uh, from a young earth perspective and um, in a global flood perspective you've got to have all of these different species or at least a vast number of these different species showing up in a period of like maybe a thousand years okay which is not a lot of time I mean when you consider that um, the, there's no indication that you could get that great of a variety unless I mean you know People that actually believe in evolution <laughs> would say there's no way that evolution happens that fast. Yeah, but I don't believe in that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's <laughs> I mean that's the thing about um, that if you if you believe in an old Earth, or I mean in a in a, a young Earth and a global flood, then you have to believe in evolution a whole lot more than the evolutionists do. You've got you got fish that suddenly become um, either saltwater or freshwater fish very quickly, um, and um, and if if that happened, it sure hasn't happened since because you don't see that fast of change in animals since then. In fact, uh, you know you really gotta you really gotta embrace the whole evolution thing whole hog if you're gonna um, if you're gonna accept that kind of change. But we've never had an instance where it needed to happen quickly again. Except for the deer that live on summer. Beach. I am just having such a time <laughs> they with this. From being hey, can let, you well, tell? <laughs> no, and, and you know what? Good. Okay. All right. Now I want you to understand it, and I, I know this is really difficult to talk about and, and, and to consider. And, but I want you to understand that that um, this is this is a book that um, biblical case for an older. Um, that was given to me to read. All right, I went through this, ready to just pounce on it. Okay, and because I've I've been a hardcore um, young Earth creationist for 15 years. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. I, all right, but when you look at you know sort of percentage of my life, you know, um, and and before that it was I hadn't really thought about it, you know, and. Um, and so when I was given this book, I had, you know, I had pencil in hand and, and you can see, you know, if, if, if you borrow this and read it, you can see my notes um, in, the, in the margins where I'm sort of asking questions and stuff like that. The problem is, is every time I would ask a question, I'd read a little further and they'd have an answer for it. And, and the conclusion that I came to is that holding the Bible as the Word of God, that it can be understood either way. And and what it comes down to is, is um, if you want to hold to an old earth and a, um, and, a, and a local flood, or if you want to hold to a young earth and a, um, and, and a, a regional flood, or I, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. <laughs> sorry, young earth, re young <laughs> earth, global flood, old earth, regional flood. Okay. Well, you could mix and match. Yeah, I, I suppose you could. All right, um, but what it comes down to is either one of those, and, and we've already spent a lot of time on it already. But what it comes down to is, it's it doesn't matter, yeah. or or it, it matters, but it's not the point. The point is all mankind died, and both sides agree on that. That's where I'm having my trouble. I, I really have a lot of trouble. Oh. 
what's the big deal? I mean, right. at and the end of at the end of this one line, do you believe it were local or global? And we divide it down the middle, and we have site. What's the big? What's the difference? Well, and and that's the point. And and what it comes down to is there are people that say, um, you know, that if if you believe in a in an old earth and a and a local flood, then you don't believe the Bible, or you don't believe it's the word of God, or or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right. And my point is that's not true. No, I don't All believe right? that. Because I have you know. And, and continue to to uphold the Bible as the Word of God, all right. And and I will fight tooth and nail to to uphold that, all right. But as I read it, I I don't see that it has to be a young Earth and a um and a global flood. As I actually look at the actual original text. And right. if you had grown in up as a Christian and only had one version of the Bible to read, you may think opposite. Well, you know, and that's the whole thing is that pretty much all the English translations translate Eretz in Genesis 6 as world. All right? Now, if back when they were translating the King James, if they had translated that land and they had translated hill as har, or har as hill, all right, we may have a completely, you know, the the majority of of Christianity may see things very differently, right? And so, um, <laughs> so you know, I just by by presenting this, I um, you know, I, I run the risk of, of being tarred and feathered, and you know, and, and and there are there are those who when when they see this video online, <laughs> I, got the, I got the feathers in the yeah, trunk. <laughs> Um, I don't care what he thinks. <laughs> I just want to get it right in my head so I'm not so... so it, you know, if anybody wants to borrow this book... I would like to read it after you're done. After you're done. So, we'll tell you, I finished it. Kimberly's reading it right now. Oh, well, that way you're not going to lend it so, if she's in yeah, the... Yeah, I, I better let her fine, finish Fine, when it. she's done, yes, I would like to. Thank okay. you. <laughs> um, and there's also, if anybody wants a copy for themselves... Um, on the Shepherd the Ridge website, there's a, a little bookstore thing in the members section, and uh, and you can buy it. It's actually through Amazon, um, but we've got a little thing set up there so that um, there's a bunch of different books uh, that are sort of recommended reading on both sides of the aisle on, on some of these issues. And, um, you know, so, I mean, you got to understand something about me is I'm not a, I'm not the, the kind of person that's going to tell you this is what you better believe and don't you dare ask any questions or you know or, or anything like that i'm not the kind of person i really believe in you know figure out what you believe but be ready to to defend yourself and um you know before you're gonna take a stand on it make sure you know what you're talking about and um you know and so so keep digging into the bible and, and keep reading this, you know, over and over and read the other passages and, and read what people are saying about it on both sides and look at the different arguments on both sides. This was really hard for me. I mean, you can't imagine because I've, you know, I, I fought pretty hard to defend the young earth position and the global flood position. And, and so many people thought I was crazy and, and um, you know, and, and I fought so hard. And then I, I read this and I went, well, yeah, but what about, oh, well, what about, oh. <laughs> And and it, it finally was like, oh, all this time I've been fighting so hard for this, and there were really better things I could have been fighting about. <laughs> but how are they arguing? Are they doing like? Are they arguing with scientific <clears throat> explanations? Oh, Basically, the, the idea behind um, sort of the, the old earth position is mm -hmm. that God reveals himself not only in his word, but also in creation. All right. So, you know, so, OK, we find dinosaur fossils. Well, we don't believe that, you know, some people say that, well, the devil planted those fossils there. There really were no such thing as um, as dinosaurs. Those were that's all. OK, well, that's a myth. You know, that's a bit extreme. But <laughs> and um, yeah, so I mean, and that's extreme. Although, unfortunately, young earth creationists are also are or Christians in general often sort of caricaturized as that, mm -hmm. um, which is really too bad, um, because it's not. I mean, I, I've never met anybody that held to that. 
I did. Somebody was just telling me about a friend of hers that that doesn't believe that dinosaurs existed, but um, believes that dragons existed because the Bible talks about dragons, but not dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, people believe all kinds of things. Right? I, I know somebody that doesn't believe we landed on the moon either. So so yeah, you know. <laughs> so okay. that, was, that, that is out there. That is yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen it. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a reflector on the moon that we left there, <laughs> so that with the right kind of laser, you can actually bounce it back. So, anyway, um, so I want to move on. Um, and so the, the next question I sort of already answered, how important is the reach of the floodwaters? And you can disagree with, you know, I, I don't think that it's all that important how far it went. The main thing is that it, it destroyed mankind, right? Because really, um, you know, what's the... The, the whole purpose was mankind was the target, uh, something that, that Mike mentioned last week um, in this uh, thing. But um, that mankind was the target, not the bunnies on the top of Mount Everest. You know, um, so so whether God killed them or not, it's sort of irrelevant to the story. It was about man's sin, All right? Um, so, so the next question is, how do you think that Noah felt as he and his, and his family boarded the ark? I'm going to answer that with a question okay. where it says, um, <laughs> oh, I think I lost it, but it says that God closed them in when they got on the boat. Uh huh. So while I would think he would, they would be afraid and so forth, that verse makes me think God closed them in. It's like he sealed them in the ark. So they must have felt, they must have trusted God. Well, you know, this you've got this sort of 120 years that Noah spent building the ark. Okay. And being laughed at. <laughs> and being laughed at and mocked. And, you know, and, and, and people must have thought he was crazy and, and stuff. And then when the animals start showing up, <laughs> whether it's animals from all over, over the earth or even animals just from all over the region you still have animals showing up lining up and getting in the ark or i mean i don't know you all see the the, the paintings where they're all in like yeah. sort of a double file line you know and Going stuff and, and I, I think that's pretty cool whether they all sort of showed up got in line and then just you know um or how exactly that went i don't know it you know it, it, it he had a, a few days to get them all on there and you know so how how exactly did except for the unicorn? Yeah, except for the unicorn <laughs> and, the, and the dragon <laughs> and the boat floated. That yeah, was, that and was Murray, amazing. That quote is um in seven sixteen. Yeah, yeah. I finally <laughs> did found you find her. it. <laughs> so yeah, and in, and in fact, you know, you talk about feeling sort of safe. You know, um, you know the um you see a lot of times the one of the very early images um. Uh, symbols that the early church used for the church is a boat, and um, and, and which we've got tons of boat stuff in the Bible. All right, we've got Jesus. Um, at least four of his disciples were fishermen. Um, you know, and and the whole sort of fishers of men and all that kind of stuff. All right, but you've also got the ark, and and the the church is seen like the ark, where God's people. Are saved from the destruction and the violence of the world, and how through the water, through baptism, which I believe it's Peter also mentions. All right, so um, so yeah, safe. At the same time, I think he would have felt really sad, you know, just to see all of the, you know, mm -hmm. all these people that he's been trying so hard to um to to convince him and you know and you know like you know there's there's i imagine there's sort of part of him that maybe just for a moment went told you you know <laughs> <laughs> and 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 maybe being a sinful man if, if he's anything like me there'd be just a little bit of satisfaction but you know but immediately going no no that's Especially not. when they all started beating on the doors of the ark, because they were, he was being sealed in there, and the waters are coming up and changing maybe, their mind. But maybe it was thick enough he couldn't hear them. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. well, it was pretty thick. 
But um, but yeah, you know, I don't know. And, and how far away were they when they realized, oh, this is we can't get to high ground here. Um, the high ground is too far away. Hmm. So. Um, and it had to be people that he cared for. It had to be. Had to be. Sure. You know, there's lots of people that I care for that are not in the boat, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. So, so it had to have been a combination of things. Trust in God and sadness at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I, I got a, a comment um, online from somebody that uh, they said on the whole global local questions, uh, somebody from England, uh, a friend of mine, and he said, um, you know, if, if it was local, then why build a boat? Why not just leave the region? Go to the nearest mountain. That's a good idea. Yay for him. Yeah, why do you <laughs> <laughs> One you know. for our side. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, and I would, I would respond to that, you know, and I kind of thought about it. And I, well, you know, um, this is also a test of Noah's faith, though, too. And, you know, it's one thing to say, like, God told Abraham, all right, go to Israel. Where's Israel? You know, just go that way, you know. Um, you know, and it's something else to, to say, I want you to build a boat. It's going to take you 120 years, and you know, and, and all this stuff's going to happen, you know. But. And all during that time, he was witnessing to people the 120 years. Right. Trying to save them. Yeah. Yeah, and what a great, you know, um, what what a great sort of symbol, you know. I look, I'm building this boat. This is safety. God is offering you safety. God's, you know, here's safety for you. It wasn't the point. wasn't just to save Noah and his family, but God's point is always He wants all men to be saved. And so, you know, it's it's not like God said, "All right, Noah, you got a week, get out of Dodge," you know, you know. It's going to give them plenty of time because you want everybody to have, don't want anybody to say, well, and you have a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. That's true. And he didn't convince anyone no. <clears throat> that it must have been by design that he wasn't supposed to convince anyone. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I, I'm a little reluctant with that, but I, I would, I mean, I would say that this shows how evil the world was. Yes. That in all that time, you know, nobody would would believe it. It was pretty hard to believe, you know, but I would think. But at the same time, uh, you know, I would I would say it was impossible to believe, in the sense that um, that faith is impossible for man. Um, but you, of all that time, the, the time that involved all the time, you would think there would be numbers of people that would. So I'm going to cover my butt. I'm just going to pretend. To just in case. Yeah, yeah just in yeah, case. Yeah, except right. they didn't want to get laughed at. It was so, you know, if if, yeah. if someone came along. Well, you could have gone and know it. Don't tell anybody no, but I, I <laughs> might have something going here, you know. <laughs> so put my name on the on the list. You know, just in case. And, yeah. and, 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 and I would contend that at most churches there are people like that. <laughs> I mean... You know, I, I there's nobody I would ever point a finger at and say like that person there. You know, <laughs> at the same time, um, I really believe that on the last day, that there's going to be people that that are going to be cast away, and you're going to go, wait a minute, them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, at the same time, I was I was talking to a pastor one time, and he was talking about his. Um, about <clears throat> salvation by grace to um, to his elders, and and the, one of his elders, like the head elder, says, "So you're saying that you know that's completely apart from our works, and we don't have to do anything to earn it?" And the pastor goes, "Yeah." He goes, "No way! I've been an elder for 15 years <laughs> in order to earn my way to heaven." Poor baby. <laughs> you know, like, buddy, that was a waste. You could have been doing it out of joy, you know. <laughs> Instead, you were doing it because you thought you had to. That abundant life. So Larry and I will just have to resign. That's all. <laughs> why, why waste their time? Oh, yeah. man, you could be going to the bars. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So what was the purpose of the flood? <clears throat> just destroy all those bad people. New beginning, new start. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when we look to baptism, that's where we really find the answer to that. 
you know, what is the purpose of baptism? It's to destroy the evil and and um, and, and cleanse the evil and, and preserve the good and, and and bring good out of evil, and um, and so we see that so clearly in the flood. <clears throat> Um, so, all right, was it right for God to wipe out so many people? Well, it'd be right for so many <clears throat> people to die in the end times. It, you know, maybe maybe not many will, but not the way Scripture reads. When you have blood up to the horse's bridles, then that's a lot of dead people bleeding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or people bleeding to death. <clears throat> right, right. Right, and that's something we need to understand. This is something that that I don't understand about the world um, and their view of God. On the one hand, they say, "Well, you know, salvation should be based on works, not on grace." That's not right. That's not fair. All right, I know people that that reject Christianity specifically because they say, "No, that's not fair. People should be held accountable for what they do." And um. And I know several people like that. They know the gospel. And they say, no, that's too easy. That's not right. Evil should be punished. Um, even though they recognize that they're evil. Hmm. Um, but at the same time, um, oftentimes it's the same people that say, well, isn't God love? And so, so I want God to be just, <laughs> but not to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is is people that say, you know, um, well, I, you know, how can a how can a um, a loving God have hell? Well, it's it's that or heaven. You know, it's it's one or the other. And um, and they say, well, I believe that that everybody goes to heaven. And you go, really? Even like Hitler? Well, not him. Oh, okay. Where do you draw the line? You know, and. Um, <clears throat> but but even there you go well, why Hitler? You know, and who God is a loving decide? God. How could he? You know, how could he create hell even for someone like Hitler? Wasn't wasn't Hitler just the product of his upbringing or you know whatever kinds of? Um, and we don't know where he ended up. <clears throat> we don't. We don't because we don't know what happened in his final. No, we hours. do not. Well, he killed himself. So. Yeah, he did. So it, it doesn't bode well for him, you know, from what we can see. Well, but, there's a whole other thing to get into is the suicide thing. So well, we won't yeah. discuss that. No, that's a whole other topic. Okay. Um, all right. So, but yeah, so God is a just God. All right. And God is also a loving God in that he loved Noah and, and saved him from that violent world. You know, what would have happened in, in future generations where we see the trend? All right. How many generations before faith would have been gone completely, or or how long before Noah's family would be, um, you know, you look at well, here the shirt I'm wearing, okay, in 52 countries Christianity is illegal, mm -hmm. right? Um, so and and people are being killed. There's there's somebody there's a woman in Pakistan right now that's in prison that um, is facing the death sentence um, to because she became a Christian. Mm. All right. So how long before Noah, his family, mm. his <laughs> his grandchildren, whatever, would have been wiped out? Mm -hmm. um, just killed. Well, look at that daughter that was in the paper that became a Christian, didn't want to go back to the parents because they were oh, Muslims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was in close, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> so how did Noah determine the condition of the earth? He's the raven and the dove. All right. A raven and a dove. All right. <laughs> so why does a dove... All right, you ever see the symbol of a dove in an olive branch? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she uses a symbol of peace. Why? Probably because um, there was an end to this <laughs> ravaging of the earth by God. The... Mm -hmm. There was peace on earth now because it wasn't being destroyed anymore. Yeah. 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 The fact that God allowed this fresh start is a sign of his mercy. All right. And and so 
yeah, this peace, you know, God has established peace again with his people. Now, it's, it's sad that, you know, you see that symbol being used in all sorts of secular <laughs> contexts and they don't even understand what it means. And, but, so, but then again, we use a lot of symbolism that we don't know what like it means. Christmas lights on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, I was thinking more like talking about peace, what it, you know, the peace symbol, right? That's, yeah. do, do you know, mm -hmm. yeah. do you know what that means? It's semaphore for N is like this and D is like this. The P symbol is, is, is those two symbols on top of each other. N, D, nuclear disarmament. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's what the P symbol means. Okay. <laughs> but I've seen people, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inverted cross that's broken. It's an anti-Christian symbol. No, it's not. <laughs> It's it's not it's not a Christian symbol, yeah. but it's not an anti-Christian symbol. It's 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 semaphore. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, why did God promise never to destroy humanity again like this? He didn't want us to be afraid every time it rained. Okay. I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of trouble when I was reading that because some people could say that he he thought maybe you made a mistake. Okay, all right. You know, we talked about that last time a little bit. Um, Did you? Yeah, a little bit. Um, <clears throat> where it says that, that he was sorry that he, he had made man. All right. Um, and, and so this would be, this would sort of tie in and, or maybe a, as, a, as a counter to that, but um, that that whole idea of um, oh, no. you know did uh, you know why did he do this and I would say because of his mercy right he made his point <laughs> he made his point too he made his point there wasn't anybody left that he made his point to well to they're gone. Noah they're gone yeah well, Noah already had but but they had the story now so future generations and in fact <clears throat> I mean I ironically every nation in the world has a flood story <laughs> even though they don't always get the details right mm -hmm. um, they um, you know the flood is remembered God doesn't need to do it again <laughs> we all know that he did it So I don't really know the answer to that. Well, it's because of his mercy. Oh, okay. Now, no, but he just promises never to destroy humanity like this. Right. With water. <laughs> All right. Fire? That's still allowed. That's mm -hmm. not part of it. And so, and he did say that on the last day that the earth would be destroyed with fire. And, um,. And the elements will melt. All right. Um, what obstacles do you face that you, like Noah, might have trouble with? In building the ark, that was no easy undertaking. It face. would have had to take an awful lot of faith <clears throat> to do something so laborious, intensive, and continue and continue with it. I mean, wow, I don't know that, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know that I would do it. Yeah, that takes I, a tremendous amount of faith. Yeah. Right? You ever have to sort of set out and go, well, God, this one's, I'm just going to trust you to, figure this one out and handle this because it's beyond me yes yeah I, i'm thinking about just you know recently look at the rough project oh man when we presented that and all right it's going to cost this much money and and the question it was a very valid question that was asked we're barely making budget now we're not even making budget now you're talking about spending an extra hour or much a month, you know, how are we going to do that? I'm in the grocery store after church today. I can <laughs> argue it again. <laughs> right? And, but you know what? This is, 
it's it's a that's a humanly that's a valid question it is certainly it is absolutely a valid question but that's only if you're leaving it up to man right so there comes a point where you got to say all right god if you want this church to continue you're going to have to help help us out here if you don't then no amount of scrimping and savings going to change that <laughs> you know and so lo and behold and yeah <laughs> yeah and then cool just yeah then we, we all of a sudden got this huge amount of pledges doesn't cover all of it but really I helped i thought the same way when we asked for the door offering for the evangelism project yeah i yes. mean who would have ever thought we would have gotten even more than we needed and that one thing i, I envisioned us i think don and i think you and i talked having to do spaghetti dinners and all kinds of stuff to get enough money to do it and yeah it's just there. But you ever notice that's kind of how God works? Oh. He presents yeah. us with the impossible and he says, go do this. Oh. All right? Yeah. Five loaves and two fish. Here, go feed them. But, um, just do it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. Get out of the boat and walk on the water. <laughs> you know? You know? That's true. And you, but you know, that's, that's the really, really cool and neat and neat thing about this church in particular. You know, everybody goes all around and all that stuff. But when push comes to shove and and someone tells them this exactly what we need or something like that, they, everybody wants to do something. But as soon as someone says, this is what you can do, everybody is knocking each other over to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's neat. But it's just, you know, what, what I see over and over again is that um, God presents us with the impossible and then he does it. All right. He says, you worry about the, the what, and I'll tell you what the what is. You let me worry about the how, right? Super. And you, 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 you plan and you, you, know, you work at it and everything, and then when you reach that point where you go, all right, I just hit a dead end, you know? And I've said over and over since I've been here, every time a door is closed, the same door opens up again. <laughs> it's, not, it's not another door. It's the same tour. I go, I, I get to this dead end and then I go, that's it. Or, you know, well, you're going to have to figure something else out. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, here comes a donation. Here comes a whatever that all of a sudden, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, let's keep going then. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but what happened when that happens, God is glorified. Then we see that it was God. Mm -hmm. okay. And, you know, and, and the same thing is true here. And yet we go, oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we just never cease to marvel, which I think is good. It's and good, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're it's good that we marvel. It's, it's bad that we're surprised. Yes. <laughs> but it's good that we marvel. Um, all right. Uh, here, okay, so this is, the, Noah gets off the boat, he performs the sacrifice, and in uh, chapter 8, verse 20 and 21, um, Noah built an altar to the Lord, taking some of the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood, never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. All right, so uh, a friend of mine was a, a farmer, and um, and he had this the sheep that died, and he figured, uh, what am I? Get, how am I going to get rid of this sheep? Okay, he couldn't like sell the meat or anything because it was diseased and that, and so he says, well, you know, in the Bible they would just like build a big fire and throw the animal on there and you know cook it up, burn it, and and that was it. So so he throws this sheep on this makes this big old bonfire and throws the sheep on there and, and gets it started. And he says, I gotta tell you something. I don't know how God can call that a pleasing aroma. <laughs> it's horrible. Well, the problem was, I bet, is because he didn't take the wool off first. You know, that could be, I, I you know, and I don't I know. that doesn't uh, smell good. So, but, but he said it also, it took forever to burn that whole thing that up. interesting, isn't that interesting? You know, and I mean, now with the, um, 
and if you read the like the sacrificial stuff, all right. First of all, you drain all the blood out of the thing. You um, you, and they cut it up into pieces and stuff like that, so that it would. And I I got the impression that he kind of just threw the whole thing on there. Yeah. You know, and so yeah, Some, if he had sort of followed the rules, you yes, know, maybe it, it would have smelt like roast leg of lamb probably. I, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> Instead right. of the so, leg carcass. of lamb. Foot of lamb, <laughs> yeah. ear of lamb, <laughs> tongue of head lamb. of lamb. Yeah. Okay, so then what does this mean that, that God um, smelled the pleasing aroma? All right, does that mean God just likes, is you know, likes the smell of a good steak? Mm-hmm. I, no, okay, we're they're thanking him and worshiping him, so. Right, right, right. It's I not, wonder, you know. I don't know how much of a period of time. It just says, and then Noah. Now, now, why why would he slaughter these animals that he just saved? <laughs> <laughs> there had to be a period of time here. All right, good question. Well, remember, Noah, when when the animals went on the ark, they had the clean and unclean. Right, there were yeah, they had the clean and unclean. And the clean animals, there were seven pairs of each of those. Unclean animals, there are only two pairs. Right? Oh. So, and if you go along with the 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 song that they came off by threesies threesies and um you know so if any of them had babies on the ark then you've got extra ones you know yeah. in addition so um did, did some of our previous scriptures did one of them say something about uh, animals to sacrifice it just said clean animals, clean animals. yeah it doesn't animals actually say anything about animals. sacrifice oh. but that seems to be but i mean in the previous Scripture. Well, we've Before got, we got um, up to this one. Seems like Abel had mm, performed mind, the sacrifice. What do you mean, like when we were doing Genesis? In Genesis. I thought, what did we have? Did we cover that in was last week? Was chapter I missed five? Last I thought week, we did. So I don't know. Yeah, just I mean, with Abel, as, as far as I know, is the only other. I could be wrong about that, but the only other reference that I can think of to sacrifice before that was Abel's sacrifice. Where Abel sacrificed, he was a shepherd. Um, and Cain sacrificed grain because he was a um, he wasn't a herdsman he was a a farmer a grain farmer vegetables all right um so it seems to say but that can't be right that only because of the smell of the aroma did God decide that he wasn't going to do this anymore. <laughs> right. that, that can't be, I don't know, there must be more <laughs> to it than that. Yeah. It's it's then, then God sounds like Esau, you know, oh, yeah. that smells so good. Man, I'll give you anything, just give me some of that. That's got to be more to it than that. It includes his mercy, I think, and his love for us. Yeah, yeah. God, God sees our faith, all right? And, and, and that's what pleases him. Of course, faith is a God-given gift. So, you know, that, that's something that, that I've always gotten, I guess you could say I've always gotten a kick out of about God is that, you know, here he gives us faith and he goes, ooh, nice faith. I like that. You know? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, you gave it to me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but here Noah responds in faith, all right? After, and, you know, and, and he's got, this is this is the kind of thing that, you know, where, where the devil finally gets fed up with this when Job comes along and he says, you're blessing them like crazy, of course they love you. <laughs> but, you know, and, but of course, that's the point. That's why we love God, because of all of his blessings. Whether it be earthly blessings like Job had in the beginning, or whether it be heavenly blessings like Job had the rest of the book. All right, I want to, you know, I'm going to skip ahead, um, and because we're way over time, and, um, and, and let's just hit the, um, in, uh, the second last question, in chapter 9, verses 1 through 17, which elements of the covenant are unconditional and which are conditional? All right, to be fruitful and, uh, um, increase in number, fill the earth. Uh, fear and dread of, of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground, fish of the sea, they're given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you, just as I gave you the green plants, and I'll give you everything. Um, you must not, all right, so, so that's all 
unconditional. God said, I'm giving you all this stuff. Right? You must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. For your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal. For each man too, I will demand an accounting for the life of this fellow man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For the image of God is God made man. All right? So that's conditional. All right? Well, there's there's conditional and unconditional. Life is in the blood. All right? And I think we talked about that earlier um, on a different day about life being in the blood. Which, um, which when we start talking about Jesus and, and the life that we have through his blood... Boy, that's um, there seems to be a reference there at least, um, and uh, as for you, be fruitful, increase in number, multiply, increase upon the earth. God said to Noah and his sons with him, I establish my covenant with you, with your descendants after you, with every living creature that was with you, birds, livestock, all the wild animals. Um, all those came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant. Never again will life be cut. Will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood? Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth or land. Um, and God said, "This is the sign of the covenant I'm making between me and you and every living creature with you—a covenant for all generations to come. I set my rainbow in the clouds to be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth." Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it. Remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I've established between me and all life on the earth. All right. So yeah, some of that sort of preliminary stuff, but when he really gets into this is the covenant, all right, here's the main part of the covenant. Right? Who's doing what there? God's doing it. All right, God's doing it. He says, "This is this is," and and I love how he how he, this is worded. Um. In in verse fourteen and fifteen, whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant. All right. So who is the who is the rainbow a reminder for? God. God. It's the, it's the string around his finger, all right? So that he will remember. It's not for us to remember. I mean, of course, we can look at it and go, God remembers. Don't reply for him. <laughs> <laughs> all right? But, um, but, you know, we can go, oh, look, God still remembers his covenant, all right? No, it's not that God's going to forget. It's not like God needs a rainbow and goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, Just as he starts to dump. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh, wait. wait. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, this is, and God does this. He, he does this here. Um, and we see this again, the fact that Jesus kept his body when he ascended into heaven. Yeah, he still has the wounds. And, and so we know that God will always remember uh, what he's done for us in Christ. All right, and so um, finally, where do we see Jesus in the flood story? Right, obviously, baptism. All right, anything else? I thought when God sealed shedding them the in. blood. Yeah, All right, shedding the blood. Yeah, and well, when He sealed them in, in He was protecting them. All right, yeah. sealing them in, making them safe, saving Giving them, them salvation. Yeah. All right. We also see there's this real sort of sense of resurrection where the earth is destroyed and then life is, is brought out of it again. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we, you know, there's, there's really that, that sort of concept too, boy. When we see that dove with that, um, with that olive branch, you know, that um, <clears throat> there's, there's your resurrection. There's life where there was death. All right. Any final questions, comments? Something like that. I'm on a time and a half right now. Yep. Twenty two minutes. Yep. It's gonna cost you. Cost me. <laughs> <laughs> You're leading the class. Yeah, but you know, don't I get overtime for this? <laughs> <laughs> 
Look for the rainbow. Didn't they tell you you're salary? You're not hourly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, it's a mistake. They didn't tell you You that. think the budget's bad now. <laughs> we had to pay you overtime. We <laughs> <laughs> to buy print. Why would we be in trouble? <laughs> well, I can tell you my sermons would be a whole lot longer. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like a high mass of the Catholic Church. Oh, God. All right. We would love every minute. I'm sure. All right, let's close the prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, you had mercy on Noah and his family, and, and, and through the mercy you showed to them, you had mercy on all of us. And, and so we thank you for that. We know that, that Noah and his family were sinners too, and yet you still saved them. And you gave them faith in you and, and enabled them to pass on that faith uh, all the way to us. And uh, so we just we thank and praise you for that. And, and we pray that you keep us in the one true faith. Always keep us uh, just diving back into your word and, and studying it and combing through it to to grow to know you better. And to um, and Lord, we, we pray that you challenge our faith as, as uncomfortable as it makes us. We know that, that you'll use that to strengthen us. And so... Uh, just you know, keep us in that faith, but but enable us to continue to grow, even if it's difficult. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.